None of us are safe. Everyone is at risk of being socially engineered. What we need to know is how to stop it. My name is Jenny Radcliffe. I'm known as the People Hacker and I'm a social engineer. So I'm hired by organisations and individuals to replicate these criminal methods up to the point of harm. So social engineering is about manipulating people in order to gain unauthorised access. And it uses all the things that make us human, our characteristics, our weaknesses, our emotions. And really it's just another term for con artistry, for scams and cons. So I'm never impressed by a criminal. Con artists are romanticised and what people don't realise with shows like Tinder Swindler, those people are not lovable rogues. They are people who've chosen not to work for what they have and to manipulate people out of what they have earned legitimately. That does untold harm to people's mental health and happiness um, and it's why my whole career is devoted to taking people like that down. I've seen some devastating attacks couple who had been scammed via social media into investing their life savings into a completely bogus scheme. They trusted that person so they kept on putting money into it even though their instinct was that this was wrong and that they were being fooled. That took all of their retirement money because there was no trace of it from law enforcement. It had all mostly been done over the phones. And because they were active participants in that particular scheme, there's no compensation either. The worst thing that you can do is assume that you're not a target and you've covered everything. Most people don't think that they're important enough or rich enough or famous enough to be a target. None of us are safe. Everyone is at risk of being socially engineered. Scammers can approach you in lots of different ways. It could be an email, it could be a phone call, it could be over social media or even in person. So really any way that we can be approached can be turned by a malicious individual into a social engineering attack. How much can they make in a day? Depends on how much is in your account. And it's not just individual hackers. It can be huge organisations with lots of people working on this, making millions in a day. I think the average business attack is something like quarter of a million. People who are less guarded, though, can be a, an easier target. So everybody, almost, that I know got texts pretending to be from Royal Mail saying you need to pay some money to pick up a parcel. Lately, we see lots of examples playing on people's charitable impulses around things like the war in Ukraine, around natural disasters, illnesses. So we often see scams that pretend to be an organisation that's going to give donations to needy people or support a political cause and actually it's just a device to take money. You'll know it's a scam by the content of what those people say. It's emotional, you're being hurried, it's about money and they need you to do something. Those four red flags stand even if it's someone you know well in person giving you that story. Particularly cruel are some of the romance scams because they're preying on people's hope. You know, they're promising reward, they're promising companionship and friendship and romance and all they're really looking to do is exploit that person. So obviously in this day and age there's lots of dating applications, dating apps and sites. And what romance scams do is they would do some research on a target typically, try and find someone who was in a demographic with perhaps money or influence and gradually build up a relationship with that person. They very quickly try and move that person away from the app or the platform they're communicating on onto something more private so that the security and, and the app doesn't notice them. They're building up this relationship, probably promising lots of things uh, and then sooner or later there'll be an emergency, often a medical emergency, uh, and they'll say, I need to come to you or I need to get to hospital and I just need some money very quickly, which I'll, of course, give back. And that sense of urgency, that sense of emotion, um, typically people will not be as logical. And then, of course, once the money's been transferred, once the person has not got so much money, that person disappears. There is a perception in security that people are the weakest link. We had a target and they asked us to get into their factory. 
But the manager of security said, you know, you probably won't do it because we've invested a lot of money in our perimeter defences, including two million pounds on this new fence. The only way anyone's gonna let you in is if they leave a door open for you, and that's not gonna happen. But human nature being what it is, and given the fact that we were in England, people follow the rules, we decided to get in with a very simple mechanism. We just wrote, please do not close this door on a sheet of A4 paper, which we then put to the outside of one of the doors to the factory. The fourth or fifth person saw the sign, wedged open the door, and we got in. People are often surprised about the amount of information that's available on all of us online. But the biggest danger is that we all post all the time. Every burger we eat, the people we work with, our causes. And even if you don't, the people you're connected to do. So we're tagged in pictures. You're only as private as your most chatty friend, colleague, family member. People don't realise the amount of information that they're releasing in some of those posts and how it could be used against them. Think of it like in, back in the day, if you went on holiday, would you put a sign on your front door saying, we've all gone on holiday and the house is empty, right? It sounds illogical, but in the digital space, people do that all the time. And they're attacked for reasons of coercion, blackmail. I've got your account, pay me some money and I'll let you have it back. People will take a chance that you want to protect it, that you would pay to protect it, and that you wouldn't want your account spreading hate messages or scams to your friends and family that follow you. It doesn't matter if you're not famous, it doesn't matter if you're not rich, it's about controlling the message. And that's why we're all a target on social media. I also saw uh, a lot of scams on elderly people that were door to door and promise things like um, vaccines or help with shopping and things over the pandemic. And that's promising help and being really friendly and then taking money off that person. What they'll try and do is, is immediately establish some sort of credibility. And a couple of the ways they do that is either posing as an authority figure, you know, I'm from the council, I'm a doctor, you know, I even work for the police, and some sort of ID, it doesn't need to be great ID, but some sort of ID. And that's often enough to convince people to stop people really asking any questions. It's how could someone be so polite, so helpful, so friendly, and then steal from me? And it's one of the big lessons is that a criminal doesn't always look like a criminal. We have certain prejudices, we expect people to look a certain way if they're a criminal, but that's not always the case. People often wonder how people can find your password. But the truth is most people reuse passwords all the time. And what you find is, is those passwords are exposed in bigger hacks of big websites that we're all kind of connected to and work and online. If you reuse that password, then they'll just try the combination of your email and password on major accounts. So you might have a password you use on a, in a banking application, for example, but you also use it for online shopping. So they'll just try it and get lucky, essentially. The truth is, is that most passwords are available on the dark web if someone wants to find them. But try and take the top 10 things that you use. So your bank, your email, shopping app, and just make sure all the passwords for those are different. And then what you're doing is you're reducing your target. It's very easy to set up a Wi-Fi that says the name of your favorite restaurant. You know, favorite restaurant, customer, free Wi-Fi. You connect to that, and then your phone's not connected to that restaurant's Wi-Fi necessarily. It could just as easily be connected to a criminal's phone that's trying to replicate public Wi-Fi in order to see what you put in your device. So if you're desperate to connect and answer an email and you're in a public place, check with the establishment the real Wi-Fi address. And because these attacks are on everyone, that just shifts the emphasis to people who are not so cautious. Do you think people should be scared? We don't want people to be scared. Criminals, rely on fear to get you to make bad decisions. What we want is people to be cautious and informed. They want us to be scared. We don't want you to be scared. There are ways to protect yourself and there are ways to make yourself a harder target. So do those, don't let them win.